If you can draw basic shapes like these, you can draw a person. Let me show you how. We're going to break this image down into basic shapes so we can draw it more easily. You don't need to understand anatomy to draw using this method because we're just breaking down the image into basic shapes that we see on the surface. For example, the bottom of her jacket looks almost like a trapezoid to me. Same with the top. And then from there, we'll add details. You can apply this drawing method everywhere to simplify the drawing process. If you want to be able to draw the human body in any pose with accuracy, please study human anatomy to more closely understand the bones, muscles, fat tissue, etc., and how they change with each pose, as well as learning proportions. I'll link to some good resources down in the description below. Okay, let's get started. Our first shape will be similar to a trapezoid, except the top and bottom will be angled like so. Make sure to place your shape near the middle of the page to make room for the rest of the body and the umbrella. In case you're wondering, here are the measurements of my shape, but I do recommend you draw a little bit bigger because you'll have an easier time drawing small details later on. Let's draw a mirror image of this below and try to make it roughly the same size. You can measure with a ruler. I'll just use my pencil and finger to measure the first shape so I can draw the second shape about the same size. That's going to be the bulk of the upper body. We can use a similar shape for the legs. To draw the length of her legs more accurately, we can measure the top part of her body in the reference image and compare it to the legs. The length is similar, but only up to her ankles, it seems. Now how much space should we allocate for her shoes? If I measure her shoe and compare it to this shape, it looks to be about half the length. This information will help us draw the legs more accurately. Now that we have that information, let's measure the upper body in our own drawing. Move that measurement down below and add a little more space below for her shoes. Again, I'm using my pencil and finger to measure, but you can use a ruler if you prefer that. Once you finish measuring, make a small tick to mark the spot, and then double check your measurement. Do the same for the shoes. Okay, let's block in the legs by drawing a line all the way down on the left. We're kind of just extending the line from the shape above. On the right side, Move in a little from the edge and draw a line that's almost completely vertical. Block in the space for her shoes using horizontal lines. Now for the inner part of each leg. The negative space between the legs looks like a triangle to me. Let's draw that. Along the top of this shape, find the midway point and make a dot. Draw a line that tapers in slightly at the bottom because the thighs should be wider than the calf and ankle. And then do the same thing for the other leg. If you want her legs thicker or thinner, adjust them now before moving on. For the upper arms, I'll use triangles that end right about here. You can add a small triangle below for her elbow if you want. The forearm can be blocked in using a rectangle or a trapezoid. Here's a rectangular jacket cuff. Hands can be blocked in using circles or ovals. We're going to tilt the head slightly, and let's use an ellipse to draw the head. 
Before we plop one on there, we first want to determine the amount of tilt using a line. The line goes through the widest part of the ellipse. If we start with a line, we can make sure the angle of the head is tilted exactly the way we want it. Okay, so decide on how much you want the head to tilt, and then between the shoulders, draw your line very faintly. And then balance your ellipse along that line. For sizing, let's make the head roughly the same length as the forearm. Moving on to the umbrella, starting with the shaft. Make a straight line that goes right through her hand, angling the umbrella whichever way you want it to go. The canopy can be drawn using an ellipse, but we want to make sure that it's 90 degrees to the shaft so it doesn't look slanted. We can do this by first drawing a line through the shaft at a 90 degree angle. Now determine how big you want the umbrella to be, and then draw your ellipse while making sure the guideline runs through the widest part. Now we have a structure to begin drawing all of our details on top of. If you need to make any changes, please do so now. To continue, make sure your shapes are faintly visible. Before we continue, I want to introduce you to the awesome sponsor for this video, Skillshare, an online learning community for creative and curious people, offering thousands of classes on topics like fine art, illustration, graphic design, photography, and so much more. Pretty much all the topics that I'm interested in. That's just one reason that enticed me to join Skillshare. With high quality content, I don't lose time searching. I can start learning right away without any hurdles or distracting ads. With a vast variety of topics and teachers to choose from, it makes it so easy to find things that I wanna learn and discover brand new topics that excite and inspire me. A class that I seriously love is Chris Hong's class called Steps to Creating Vivid Portraits with Colored Pencils. She broke down a topic I was previously scared of and made it so easy to understand. And I love her colorful style. A key takeaway I learned was that I can use any color I want as long as the portrait still reads well in grayscale. I need to practice way more, but I already see a huge improvement from my previous work. Skillshare classes are well structured, broken down into smaller lessons so I know exactly what I'm getting into and I can quickly jump back and forth between lessons to reference material as I draw. Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box or my code RAPIDFIREART a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. All right, let's start drawing more detailed line work to make this blocky structure look more like a person, starting with her clothes. I'll use dark strokes so you can clearly see what I'm doing. I recommend that you draw details lightly at first, and then once you're happy with how everything looks, you can darken your strokes. That way, you can erase mistakes easily. Let's start with the bottom portion of the jacket. All of these shapes we've drawn, we're using them as rough guidelines, so they're helping us get an idea of where to draw things, but we don't want to stick to them too closely. Otherwise, we'd make our final drawing appear blocky and stiff. Along the left side of the jacket, I'm going to draw a slight bump for the pocket. Try to make the fabric a little wavy so it doesn't look too stiff. Somewhere down the middle of this shape, draw the opening of the jacket. Round off the corner here and then work your way over to the left. Let's draw the right side in a similar way, making sure the pockets are similarly sized. Curve the fabric quite a bit along the bottom. For the belt, 
Start by drawing a band that goes across the waist, and then add the buckle, making sure it's a little wider than the band. Add a smaller rectangle inside of this one, and that's it. Let's finish drawing those pockets. Okay, arms. Starting at the shoulder, round off the sharp corner. As you come down, curve your stroke inward slightly. Picture the elbow as a triangle because we want to make it pointy. Continue up the forearm and create little bumps in the fabric as you go. Here at the inner elbow, draw some folds in the fabric by flicking your pencil down. Let your strokes taper out at the end. For the cuff, stop when you're almost near the hand. Create a rounded corner here and then draw a deep U-shape. And here comes the cuff. It hugs the wrist more closely. And then add another U-shape to finish it off. You can draw the other side of your cuff if the umbrella handle isn't in the way like mine is. Time to draw her hand. I'm drawing a candy cane shape here to mark the boundary between the hand and the umbrella handle. This is a very simple looking handle. It's just a solid cylinder, but really I'm just scribbling it in. If you drew this on a larger scale, like I mentioned earlier, you'll have a much easier time. The details of the hand are going to be a bit of a challenge the smaller you draw. So what I'm doing here is just cutting my circle to hint at the shape of a hand. If your drawing is as small as mine, it might look very messy trying to draw each individual finger, as you can see here. Instead of trying to draw all the fingers, you can draw just the index finger and create very few faint lines to just hint at the other fingers. Let's continue to move up our drawing. Draw an outline around her head to account for hair. Make sure there's enough space around the head to give her hair some volume. If you draw it too close to her head, the hair will appear very thin. I'm going to push all of her hair behind her shoulders. Feel free to draw it like the reference photo. This is just my preference. Draw a curve below the head along the shoulders for the jacket collar. Add a slightly wavy line for the jacket opening, and make sure it's aligned with the bottom part. To draw the flappy part of the collar, you can first draw a triangle at the shoulder, and then trace around it using curvy lines that look more fabric-like. Draw the one on the left side in a similar way. For the right side of her upper body, bring your pencil stroke inward to shape her breast. I'm doing this a little more than halfway down the guideline shape. Let's draw the right sleeve now. I'm working along the faint guidelines, placing one curve at a time to show the folds of fabric along the arm. Flick your pencil off the page at the end of each stroke to feather out the ends. Keep going down the length of the forearm. Round the corners off before the cuff.
Then draw a curve along this section where the wrist is. Use curved lines again to draw the cuff so it doesn't look stiff. For her hand, I'm going to actually change the pose into something more simple to draw on a small scale. If you want to draw the pose in the photo, you can start with a triangle and add some ovals for the fingers. To draw a hand in this pose, I'm using an oval. Let's cut the oval like so, to make the shape resemble a hand. You can use a long oval for the thumb, and a shorter one for the tip of the index finger. This is incredibly difficult to draw because it's so small. I feel like I need a microscope. Let's draw the end of her belt peeking through from behind as well. And there's also the buttons on her jacket. I think we're done here for now. Let's move on to her legs, starting at the very bottom. These shapes aren't really enough to draw her boots in detail, so let's use smaller shapes to get a little closer to what the reference picture shows. What shapes do you see? I see a rectangle and triangle. If you see other shapes, feel free to use those. To make her legs look more natural instead of blocky and stiff, pay attention to the curves of each leg as you draw the detail of the fabric that wraps around them. If you want, you can outline her leg shape using more detailed lines before drawing her pants and boots so you have more natural guidelines to follow. Along her thigh, use a slight curve to indicate the mouth of her thigh-high boots. Pay attention to the curves of her upper thigh as you draw her pant fabric and remember to use wavy lines where the fabric bunches up. Give the boot fabric some thickness by making it stick out a little further than the lines you drew for her thighs. Let's make our stroke really wavy all the way down each boot to show that the fabric is bunched up. Stop right above the ankle. Keep in mind that if the waves are too big, the fabric will look very loose. Bring the fabric out significantly right above the ankles, except for this side, because she's stretching the fabric as she points her toe out. For each foot, round off your corners as you loosely follow the guideline shapes. Create a point down here. You can imagine a triangle as you draw it. Now let's draw the left one. Make sure this line is slightly curved. For the heel, imagine a triangle here before you draw it, to help get the shape right. Round off the toe. It might help to imagine a rectangle here. If you want, you can add wrinkle lines along the length of the boot by flicking your pencil in at certain areas where the fabric is most bunched up to add to the effect. Feather out the end of each stroke by flicking your pencil off the page quickly. Now let's draw the umbrella. I'm just cleaning up some unneeded lines, keeping only the ellipse and umbrella shaft. Let's focus our attention within the ellipse for a second. From here to here, along the shaft, make a mark one-third of the way down. That's going to be where the shaft touches the umbrella fabric. Between this mark and the top of the umbrella, we'll have another ellipse that passes right through here. This is going to be the top of the umbrella, and this will be the underside. Along this area, we're going to make five ticks and join them together using lines. Let's put one here, and here. Connect them together using a straight line. 
add another tick here. These first two sections can be roughly the same length. The outermost ticks will fall slightly outside the ellipse. The length of this line should be shorter than the first set. And then do the same on the left side. Let's draw three more ticks along the bottom of the ellipse and connect these ones together using slightly concave lines. The distance between each tick is similar to what we did above, where the outer two lines are short and the inner two are long. For the top of the umbrella, draw a curve starting at each tick you made along this section. The curves should all point inward at an angle and jut out just a little bit past the largest ellipse. Then join the ends together using a curve that dips down and touches that same ellipse. Angle this stroke in more. The rightmost one won't even be visible from this angle. Draw a solid ellipse for the umbrella runner. That's the part you push when opening an umbrella manually. To draw the umbrella ribs, first sketch an ellipse, using these points as a sizing reference. From each of these tips, Draw a slight curve that comes up to the ellipse and then pivot to the center of the umbrella. Do this for each rib. These ribs on the side may be barely visible or completely blocked from view. When you're done with the umbrella, erase your guidelines to clean it up. The umbrella stays open using stretchers. Let's draw these by choosing a point along the runner and draw a straight line from there out to each rib. Now for the head and hair. Lightly plan out where you want her hair to be parted. I'm drawing her parting line on the left, with side sweeping bangs toward the right. A little bit of hair covering the left side of the forehead too. To draw a face, draw a horizontal line through the halfway point of the head. This is for the eyes. Now halfway between the eye line and chin, add another horizontal line for the nose. Let's cut the ellipse to bring out her jawline. Starting a little bit below the eye line, taper the face in slightly. Stop about halfway between the nose line and chin. Decide on how wide you want her chin to be, and then connect your pencil stroke back to where you left off. Let's draw that hair around her neck. On the nose line, balanced along the middle of the face, draw her nose, lightly at first, so we can still play with sizing. I'm using a semicircle. Along the eye line, split the line into five spaces. In the second and fourth space, 
sketch two faint ovals for each eye. The space between the eyes and each eye itself should be equal to the width of her nose. Adjust the ovals and semicircle based on that. The eyebrows sit above each eye and kind of follow that ovaly shape. For her lips, we're going to draw them about a third of the way down from the nose to chin. Draw the opening of the mouth using a line that curves up or down at the ends. This line should be a little bit wider than the nose. Below the line that you just drew, draw a small curve to indicate the bottom lip. Check that you're happy with the size and position of each feature before moving on. Below the semicircle we drew for her nose, add a more shallow curve to close off the shape. There isn't much detail I can add because my drawing is so small, but I will do what I can. Just enlarging her eyes slightly toward the outer corners to get more of an almond shape. To draw the tiniest nose I've ever drawn, I'm taking this lemon shape and then erasing the top part, and that should look more like a nose. I don't have room to draw the nostrils, but you can if the space allows for it. Let's clean up the guidelines before we continue. You can draw her nose bridge using a faint curve that runs from her eyebrow midway down her nose. Now that the space below her nose is cleaned up, I can draw her upper lip using a slight curve that connects to the corners of the lip. And it looks like I forgot to draw the left collar. It's like a triangle shape, similar to the one on the right. Shading is optional. I'm giving her a shadow below her feet. As I shade downwards, I'm tapering the shape slightly. To make her feet look more planted on the ground, shade a little darker directly below each foot. I'm also shading the umbrella and her hair. If your shading looks uneven or grainy, use a blending stump, q-tip, or tissue paper to blend the graphite out smoothly. If you're happy with how it looks, erase your guidelines to clean up your drawing. And there we have it! I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to draw a girl using basic shapes. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and leave a comment down below. It really helps to support the channel. Thank you for your support and I hope to see you again in the next video.